Hi, I'm Karen and I'm going to share with you a quick tutorial on how to use Shadow Puppet EDU in the classroom. So if you look on the bottom left, you'll see a little picture or an app of a bunny rabbit. Well, that would be Shadow Puppet EDU. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And you'll notice here, um, you can see a nice little plus sign to create a new project in all of the past projects that I've worked on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. What's neat about Shadow Puppet is that first off on this left hand side you're going to notice that it automatically gathers pictures from your camera roll and videos. And so um, one of the first steps I recommend students to do if they're younger is to take their photos of examples of their learning. So in our case, in our, our activity, we actually had um, students take pictures of the different parts of the plants. So we had plants available in the center of the table and they took their photos. Um, so if I want to bring in any of these pictures, all I have to do is just tap on the pictures and I'll go ahead and bring those photos in. Let's see, I need a picture of some leaves too. On the left hand side though, you're going to see there's some other features like a map search or famous landmark search. Um, you'll notice that there's uh, pictures available from the Library of Congress if we do a search there. I'm going to go ahead and use web images and if I were looking for parts of a plant or maybe some plants basic needs like water, I could go ahead and type that into the search and pictures of water would appear. What's really neat about using um, the image search here in Shadow Puppet is that at the end of the project it always cites um, where the photos were taken from. So I'm going to go ahead and search for the sun because we know that we need some sun uh, for our plants to grow. And I can go ahead and bring that in. So you'll notice there are other things such as backgrounds and so forth that you can go ahead and pull from. And once you're ready, if you look on the bottom, you'll see the number six in reorder. And that just signifies that I have six pictures that I can reorder here. And so this is kind of nice because I could, by holding down on one of the photos, drag it into a different order. And I could talk about the basic needs of the plants first before I got into the different parts of the plant. And once you're finished reordering, or maybe you need to delete photos, or again, if you tap them, you'll notice there's remove and duplicate if needed, um, you just simply hit the next button. And then you'll see now that you have all of the pictures that you can kind of thumb through. And I'm gonna go back to the beginning. You can add text and music to each of the slides and you can also record your audio. And then there are some fun pointers that you can bring in as well. So for example, I'm gonna to touch the T for text here and I can just call this uh, parts of a plant and you'll see that um, the title comes in pretty easy here. All right, there are things that you can do with uh, um, animating those texts. Different fonts, you know, if you wanna get super fancy here. We also have colors. One thing that I don't recommend just from experience is using this ABC box, which will move it to different places. Um, on the screen because when it exports, um, if it doesn't export in a perfect square, I'll just tell you it usually will cut off that text. So I like to leave it right there in the middle. Of course, you also have the text size. So if you need to, you can touch the large A, little a to make it larger and smaller as well. Okie dokie, trying to find a good one here. Here we go. So we'll go with zoom. Once you like it, you just simply hit the little check mark. Ta-da! And I have the text for my first photo. And of course you can do that for each of your slides if you want to add text to each slide. That's definitely a nice little possibility for you. Okay? Um, all right, so we'll go back to the first page here. You also notice there's music and by selecting the music, you can go with the background built-in music here from Shadow Puppet and there'll be nice background music while students are recording their audio. Okay, I'm gonna choose not to add any music for mine, but you could if you wanted to. Now on the bottom, you're gonna notice that there's a microphone and that's simply to mute and unmute your mic. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to mute if you're showing a video and you don't want to um, talk on top of it, but of course you can mute it if you don't want any background noises. So if I hit start, I can begin to tell you a little bit about what I know about the different parts of the plant, and maybe their basic needs. 
Today in science, we learned all about the different parts of the plant. And I also learned some of the things plants need to survive. So for example, plants need water to survive. They need water. Plants also need the sun. It is fiery hot and it's so important because without the sun, plants couldn't make food and they wouldn't have any energy. So I'm gonna simply press the pause button here because I can also go to the next page and think about or practice what I want to record. So if I wanna tell you a little bit about the parts of the plants, this would be the little space where I could stop and practice what I was going to say and then go ahead and record. And so you have a couple nice little features here, but let's pretend I make a mistake. So I'm going to uh, unpause. These are the roots. Roots are so important because they help bring water and nutrients from the soil up to the plant so that it could make beautiful flowers. Pause. Now if I mess up, over on the left I can choose the undo. And it's kind of alarming here because it says redo this page. Anything you've recorded on this page will be lost. And it's okay because it will only take away the recording from that one page. So you can click OK or cancel. And of course you can do this for each of the pages along the way if need be. So the thing to keep in mind that it is um, when you when you actually save this video, it is only going to save on top of the slides that you've recorded on. And so if I don't want to record um, myself saying anything, I can always hit that mute, press unpause and let it go for about two seconds and not say anything so that it's still recording on top of the product. Anyway, we'll, we'll just pretend that I went through the whole project and I'm finished. So when you are finished, you can go ahead and press that save button. You can't play and watch it here just to make sure you like it. You actually have to save it. So we'll save the, save the project here. Lovely. And I have a couple options for things that I can save it to. Um, personally, I love Seesaw, but we won't get into that right now. Um, but just by clicking the done button or that little link at the top, it's actually going to save to your album called Puppets and it creates that album inside of your um, photo gallery or your camera roll, I guess you could call it that. And so right now it's processing my lovely video. Okay, once the shadow puppet has been saved to the camera roll, um, you'll be able to view it there. Um, another thing though is I could of course play the video here by pressing the little play button. And there's also this uh, little icon here in the top right that looks somewhat like a clip clipboard. You'll notice there's another way to resave it to the camera roll to copy and re-record in case um, you did make a mistake and you want to try recording this all over again. It will um, just take out the audio and keep all of these slides in the right order. Um, of course, there's delete and share as well. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of Shadow Puppet very quickly here. And I'm going to take you to my photos because I want you to see that um, in my albums, or well right now, you're going to notice that today on the very bottom is that picture of my, or a picture icon of the video, the shadow puppet that I created. But if I go to albums on the bottom and I select that, you're going to notice that there is also a, there we go, a folder right here in the middle called Puppet. And if I click on that little album, there will be all of the videos automatically organized that have come from the Shadow Puppet app. Anyway, creating with Shadow Puppet is pretty simple and lots of fun. I hope that you try utilizing it with your students. Have a good day.